let's talk a little bit about DNA cloning, which is all about making identical copies of a piece of DNA. And usually it's a piece of DNA that, that codes for something we care about. It is a gene that will express itself as a protein that we think is useful in, in some way. Now you might have also heard the term cloning in terms of the Clone Wars and Star Wars or Dolly the Sheep. And that is a related idea. If you're cloning an animal or an organism, like a sheep, well then you are creating an animal that has the exact genetic material as the original animal. But when we talk about cloning and DNA cloning, we're talking about something a little bit, a little bit simpler. Uh, although as we'll see, it's, it's still quite fascinating. It's identical copies of a piece of DNA. So how do we do that? Well, let's say that this is a strand of DNA right over here, and I'm just drawing it as a line, but this is a double-stranded, and I'll just write it down, this is double-stranded. I don't want to have to take the trouble of keep drawing the multiple strands. Actually, let me just draw, let me just try to draw the two strands, just so we remind ourselves. So there we go. This is the double-stranded DNA. And let's say that this part of this DNA has a gene that we want to clone. We want to make copies of this right over here. So gene to clone. Gene to clone. Well, the first thing we want to do is we want to cut this gene out somehow. And the way we do that is using restriction enzymes. And there's a bunch of different restriction enzymes. And I personally find it fascinating that we as a civilization have gotten to the point that we can find and identify these enzymes and we know at what points of, of DNA that they can cut. They recognize specific sequences. And then we can figure out, well, what, which restriction enzyme should we use to cut out different pieces of DNA? But we have gotten to that point as a civilization. So we use restriction enzymes. We might use one restriction enzyme. Let me use a different color here. That that latches on right over here and identifies the genetic sequence right over here and cuts right in the right place. So that might be a restriction enzyme right over there. And then you might use another restriction enzyme that identifies with the sequence at the other side that we want to cut. So let me label these. These, those things right over there, those are restriction enzymes. Restriction enzymes. And so now you would have, after you apply the restriction enzymes, you will have just that gene. You might have a little bit left over on either side. But essentially, you have cut out the gene. You've used the restriction enzymes to cut out your gene. And then what you want to do is you want to paste it into what we'll call a plasmid. And a plasmid is, is, a, is a piece of genetic material that sits outside of chromosomes, but that can reproduce along, or that could, I guess we could say, can replicate along with the machinery of the, or the genetic machinery of the organism. Or it can even express itself, just like the, gen the genes of the organism that are in the chromosomes express themselves. So then, so this is where we cut, let me write this, we cut, we cut out the gene, and then we want to paste it, then we want to paste it into a plasmid. And plasmids tend to be circular DNA. So we will paste it into a plasmid. And in order for them to fit, the, there's oftentimes these overhangs over here. So you might have an overhang over there. You might have an overhang over there. And so the, the plasmid that we're placing in might have complementary base pairs over the overhangs, which will allow it easier, it will become easier for them to react with each other if they have these overhangs. So let me, we're pasting it into the plasmid. And this is amazing because obviously DNA, this isn't stuff that we can like, you know, manipulate with our hands the way that we would uh, copy and paste things with tape. You're, you're making these solutions and you're applying the restriction enzymes. The restriction enzymes are just in, in mass cutting these things. They're bumping in just the right way to cause this reaction to happen. Then you're taking the, those genes and then you're putting them with the plasmids uh, that happen to have the right sequences at their ends so that they match up. And then you also put in a bunch of DNA ligase. DNA ligase to, to connect the backbones right over here. And we also saw DNA ligase when we studied replication. So that is DNA ligase, which you can think of it as helping to do, helping to do the pasting.
And so now we have this plasmid, and we want to insert it into an organism that can make the copies for us. And an organism that's typically used is, or a, a type of organism is bacteria, and E. coli in particular. And so what we could do is, we could, let's say that we have a bunch of, let's say you have a vial right over here. You have a vial, and it has a solution in it with a bunch of E. coli. a bunch of e coli and you actually wouldn't be able to see it visually but there is e coli in that in that solution and then you would put your plasmids which you would be even harder to see in that solution and somehow we want the e coli the we want the bacteria to take up the plasmid and the technique that's typically done is is giving some type of a shock to the system that makes the bacteria take up the plasmids and the typical shock is a heat shock and this isn't fully understood how the heat heat shot how, how the heat shock works but it does and so people have been using this for some time so if you have a bacteria you have a bacteria right over here it has it has its existing dna so this is its existing genetic material right over there and let me label this this is the bacteria you put it in the presence of our plasmids so you put it in the presence of our plasmid and you apply the heat shock and some of that bacteria is going to take in the plasmid it's going to take in the plasmid and so just like that it's going to take it it's going to take it in and so what you then do is you place the solution that has your bacteria some of which will have taken up the plasmid and you put it and then you try to grow the bacteria on a plate so let me draw that so let me draw so here we have a a plate to grow our bacteria on and it has it has nutrients right over here that bacteria can grow on it has nutrients it has nutrients and so you could say okay well, we'll put this here and then a bunch of bacteria will just grow so you would see things like this which would be many 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 cells of bacteria there would be colonies of bacteria you could just let them grow but there's a problem here because i mentioned some of the bacteria will take up the plasmids and some won't and so you don't know hey you know when when this this bacteria when it keeps replicating it might form one of these it, it might form one of these colonies so this is a colony that you like so this one is a good colony i put a check mark there but maybe this colony is formed by a initial bacteria or a set of bacteria that did not take up the plasmid so it won't contain the actual gene in question so you don't want that one so how do you select for the bacteria that actually took up the plasmid well what you do is besides the gene that you care about that you want to make copies of you also place a a gene for antibiotic resistance in your plasmid so now you have a gene for antibiotic resistance here and so only the the bacteria and i think it's amazing that we as humanity have are able to do these types of things but now only the bacteria that have taken up the plasmid will have that antibiotic resistance and so what you do is in your nutrients you put nutrients plus antibiotics plus an antibiotic antibiotic And so this one will survive because it has that resistance. It has that gene that allows it to uh, not be susceptible to the antibiotics. But these are not going to survive. They're not even going to happen. They're not even going to grow because there's antibiotics in, mixed in with those nutrients. And so this is a pretty cool thing. You started with the gene that you cared about. You cut and pasted it into into our plasmid. Let me write the labels down. Into our plasmid. that also contained a gene that that con, that gave antibiotic resistance to any bacteria that takes up the plasmid you put these plasmids in the presence of the bacteria you provide some type of a shock maybe a heat shock so that some of the bacteria takes it up and then the bacteria starts reproducing and as it reproduces it also is reproducing the plasmids and because it has this antibiotic resistance it is going to grow on this nutrient antibiotic mixture and the other bacteria that did not take up the plasmids are not going to grow and so just like that you can take this you can take this colony right over here 
and put it into another solution or continue to grow it and you will have multiple copies of that gene that are inside of that bacteria. Now the next question, and I'm oversimplifying things for fairly dramatically, is well how do you, you now have a bunch of bacteria that have a bunch of copies of that gene, how do you make use of it? Well, uh, the bacteria themselves, let's say that gene is for something you want to manufacture, uh, say insulin for diabetics. Well, you could actually use that bacteria's machinery. We use its, its, its reproductive machinery to keep replicating the genetic information. But you can also use its, its, its productive machinery, I guess you could say. It's going to express its existing DNA, but it can also express the genes that are on the plasmid. In fact, that's what gives it, it's, that's what would give the bacteria its antibiotic resistance. But it could, if this gene was, say, for insulin, well then the bacteria will produce, will produce a bunch of insulin. a bunch of insulin molecules which you might be able to use in some way. And I'm not going to go into all of the details of how you will get the insulin out and how you could make use of it, but needless to say, it's pretty cool that we could even get to this point.